Hello? Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Sydney Many, and today I'll be presenting my research this semester to build a muon detector, and I'll also discuss how the muons are detected and what I'll plan to learn from this project. So to begin, I will go over what muons are. They're elementary particles. They're very similar to electrons. However, they have about 200 times the mass of an electron. Um, and they don't really interact much with matter. So you can't really tell that they're round. For example, um, just through the space of the palm of your hand, there's about one passing through that space every second, but we can't tell that. Um, and then they are produced, um, you can see in figure one, they're produced in the upper atmosphere at an altitude of about 15 kilometers. And they're produced when cosmic rays, which are um, about 89% of cosmic rays are protons and they just they come from outer space from multiple different sources cosmic rays will come in and interact with um, the atoms the nuclei in the atoms in the upper atmosphere and then it will create a shower of particles which come down through the atmosphere and almost all of these particles will scatter and decay before reaching the ground however muons are able to reach the ground um, many of them are and Next slide, okay. So for the muons to come down, we need the special theory of relativity to explain this. There are two parts to that, a time dilation and a length contraction. And these um, parts of the special theory of relativity allow the muons time to not decay before reaching the ground. So when they decay, they a muon will um, decay into an electron, an anti, um, neutrino, anti-electron neutrino, and a muon neutrino, and then anti-muons decay into a positron, an electron neutrino, and a anti-muon neutrino. So like I previously mentioned, um, we can detect a lot more on the ground here than is predicted non-relativistically or without using Einstein's special theory of relativity. So for my project, I'll be gathering data um, at the ground level, and then I'll be using those count rates that I'm getting to predict um, different count rates at higher altitudes. And then I will be actually measuring the count rates at those higher altitudes. So I am building two muon detectors um, to get count rates at different altitudes. Um, the plastic scintillator, which is, oh, am I on the wrong slide? There we go. <laughs> Um, the picture on the left, that is how the um, muons are detected. So they'll come into the plastic scintillator, they'll um, create electronic excitations in the atoms in the scintillator, and then when the um, electrons decay back into their ground state orbital, it'll release photons, which can then be detected by a silicon photomultiplier. Um, and then along with the scintillator part of the detector, there's um, a board pictured on the right, and that is, I'll be soldering a lot of parts onto that board for the detector. So for gathering my data, I plan to gather data both at the ground and top floors of Whitmer Hall. And then I will also be taking the detectors up to an altitude of about 30,000 feet. With the help of the UND Aerospace Department, I'll be able to take them up in their King Air aircraft. And another possible um, way that I could get some high altitude data is by putting it in one of our Advanced Rocketry Club rockets and sending it up there. Okay, so the um, detectors are not yet constructed, but I have been able to do a lot of predictive calculations for the time dilation and length contraction. So that first equation up there is the equation for the time dilation. The delta tau sub p stands for the proper time, which is the time that a muon would feel if you were in their frame of reference. Delta t sub i is the improper time, and that's the time that we observe um, externally from the muon traveling. The v is the velocity of the muons, and that's known to be between 0.994 and 0.998 times the speed of light. So very close to the speed of light. They travel very fast since they have such little mass. 
And C is just the speed of light, which is about 300 million uh, meters per second. So if I plug some numbers into these equations, I can put 2.2 microseconds into the T, the tau sub P, the proper time. That is known to be the um, average lifetime of a muon before they decay. Then I can get an improper time of 20 to 35 microseconds. And in that time, the muon can travel between um, 6,000 and 10,000 meters. And then I can do the same with that second equation up there, which is for the length contraction. And L sub P is the proper length, um, the length that the muon feels that it's traveling, while L is just the improper length or the length that we're observing it to travel. So for example, if we observe it being produced at an altitude of 15 kilometers and then traveling down to the ground, the muon itself, since it's traveling at relativistic speeds, it's traveling so fast, it'll only feel as if it's actually traveled between 950 and 1600 meters. So I also have to um, consider that not all muons decay within 2.2 microseconds, that's just an average. So there's um, equation three is a rate equation. And using that, I can derive equation four, um, where lambda is the known decay constant for muons, n is the number of muons remaining, um, and not is the starting number of muons, and then T is the time after the um, muons are first produced. So with all of these equations that I've just mentioned, I can make some predictions um, both with and without the special theory of relativity. And you can see the results in table one. So for example, with Einstein's special theory of relativity, um, at ground level, I'll be able to detect between eight and 24% of all muons produced in the upper atmosphere. But if I go up to an altitude of about 25,000 feet, which I will be able to reach in the aircraft, um, I should be able to detect between 29 and 40%, 49% of all of those initial muons produced. But if we don't account for the special theory of relativity, you can see the number is very, very, very small. Even at a high altitude, it's only 0.0001 percent of all muons produced. So um, another factor with the muon detector is that sometimes muon detectors can pick up other sources of radiation, of ionizing radiation, like um, beta and gamma radiation, and neutrons can affect the count rates in the muon detectors. So I've also soldered a Geiger counter, which is in the picture up there. And that Geiger counter can detect both beta and gamma radiation. And I tested it just last week and it worked great. Um, so I will be able to set up that Geiger counter along with the muon detectors. Um, and that'll ensure that I'm not getting any extra counts from outside radiation. So I will be able to subtract the count rates that I'm getting from the Geiger counter from the muon detectors. So overall, this project is testing Einstein's special theory of relativity. And from these predicted values that I have um, without the special theory of relativity, we'd get almost no muons that would reach us at ground level. Um, but if my predicted high altitude count rates with the length contraction and time dilation, if those predictions match the measured data that I'll get, it will support Einstein's special theory of relativity. And since it is still just a theory, they're always looking for more um, data and information to support that theory. So I'd like to thank my mentor, Dr. Tim Young. I've worked with him since my freshman year, and um, he has helped me with this project throughout the semester. And I'd also like to give a huge thanks to the McNair program for supporting this project. It's been a lot of fun. And you guys have supported all of the parts that I've needed for it, which is a great help. And I would also like to thank the US master program. They um, covered some of the soldering materials that I needed. And those are just my sources. Thank you all for listening. Um, usually they'll have some sort of scintillator or like big detection. A lot of 
detections with particles like these are because 